about the Singer Professional 5 Serger. Um, if you just got this and you're feeling a little intimidated, then this video is for you. This is a really simple machine, it's really easy to use, but you just have to learn the basics first. So I'm going to tell you those basics and hopefully you'll be up and running by the time you're done with this short video. Um, so I hope you still have your instruction book. This is what came with it. Um, this is just pretty invaluable because it shows you all of the dis different stitches that you can do with this machine. Um, up to five threads it holds. So what I really love about this book is just the handy reference chart. So as soon as you've picked a stitch, say you want to do a cover stitch narrow, so that's number 11, it tells you exactly how to thread it. You go to number 11, cover stitch, and it tells you all the settings that it needs to be on, where your needle has to be, and which threads need to be threaded. It also, at the end, has a page number of where you can see more about this threading, so it says, let's see, 51. And it will tell you more. Um, for example, if it needs the spreader or if it doesn't, um, and I can show you what that is, the spreader, while I'm thinking about it, is here. If this is an up or down position, which covers the hole on that looper. So, um, so it's really handy just to have, but my goal is by the time you're done with this video, you'll be able to navigate this entire reference chart. Um, so, um, when you're up here and you're saying, okay, what is ATD, what is SL, what that's talking about, these bolded letters, these are the dials and the settings that the dials need to be on. So I've label, labeled my machine with a labeler, so ATD stands for Auto Tension Dial, and that's right here on the top. Um, SL is for Stitch Length and that's the one below. Um, this is just your hand knob there. Um, DF is differential feed, which is the back one on this side. This is for your presser foot, and this is cutting width. Um, if you have a label, I, labeler, I recommend labeling these if you're learning m your machine, because as you are reading here, okay, where did these positions need to be. Um, it's very simple to say, oh, ATD, okay, that's over here, needs to be on D, which it already is. Um, make sure your stitch length, so I'm doing number one, is on N. So, if you get the idea. So you follow those. LC, I didn't show you, that is in here, and you'll see a C is up and down is L. So you can move this entire mechanism up and down. For the current one, it's in C. Um, because I was doing a cover stitch. So that's what all your settings are. So um, right now, this is, this is what setting I'm in. I'm in a double chain stitch. So it looks just like a sewing machine, just a regular sit stitch on top and then it looks thicker. It's a chain stitch on the back. So that's where I'm at now. Um, after these bolded letters it says needle position and that it's indicated in red where your needle needs to be. So I'm going to show you how to um, adjust that. I'll make a separate video on more detailed how to do that so you can look for that. Um, essentially you get this tool and there's five dark circles um, I know that right now it's in the center, middle, forward position, um, and that's this hole right here, right in the middle. So I can just turn that loose and pull the needle right out. If I want to put it back in, I you can look under here and there's five different slots that match with this diagram here. Um, and right here I have my blue and my brown thread and they're both threaded. The other ones are not threaded currently. So that's what these mean. So if I was to 
um, want to switch. Say, okay, now I've done my chain stitch, but I need a, let's see which one we should do, a four thread ultra stretch mock safety stitch. Um, I can show you what that looks like. That's number six. So right here. So if you're trying to mimic something on some clothing that you have and you're, okay, what is that stitch called? I'm trying to mimic this. Then I, I know, okay, number six. I need to change my settings to this. Um, which threads do I need? I need the orange and the blue. And because these are needles, that means I need two needles. And the red. So I'm going to unthread the brown. Um, my blue is already threaded, so I'll just have to add that. So I can pull, make sure that these are clear. Pull the blue out. And I don't need the green for this one. So if I needed green, I would do that one first. But because I don't, I'm going to the second, number two. And I'm going to thread that one. Okay, these are color-coded, so I'm just following the red dots. Um, as I get further in there, I'm going to grab my tweezers. That'll make it easier. These tweezers come with the machine. So if you're not um, exactly sure where to go, if you're trying to follow the dots, let me show you really quick. If you're trying to follow the dots and you're not quite sure, um, it's going to tell you Starting on page 17, it'll tell you how to thread the green, how to thread the red, the brown, the blue, and the orange. It will tell you, has a detailed diagram of exactly where it needs to go. Um, so if you have any doubt, just go ahead and look on any of those pages and that will help. Okay, here's some needles, get my tool, you may or may not need to take off the foot, if you do, there's a red button in the back and that will release it, I'm going to try without, um, so you just need to make sure that it's all the way twisted to the left so that it's open. The flat side of the needle goes backwards, and looks like I was able to go in. Whoops. And then twist it till it's hand tight, and you'll be able to see the top of the needle position to make sure that it's all the way in. Um, as you're looking close, you can see that. So that is how to do that. Now I will thread the orange. And after this one that sticks out right here, there's one in the back that sometimes if you're sitting above it you don't see and so you forget about it. So make sure you get it through this one here. And whenever you're done um, with the thread, this one's kind of hanging. Just push it to the back of the machine and get it out of the way. That's where it needs to be. I've got number six, so I need to change the, the auto tension dial to G. I need to change my stitch length to two. I need to change my differential to N, which I believe it's on already. And then the, make sure that I'm in the L position, which I, I am currently. Um, this is where the knife is. It's a little silver pull out. You pull and rotate up. So if you're wanting to cut, that is, you pull the knife out. Um, if you'll notice, this flat plate is for cover stitches. You'll notice right there, I'm going to want to put on the other plate. So there's a little tab right here. I'm just going to lift back, lift up, and pull back. 
And I'm going to put this one on. It has a nice place for the knife. And just line up each of these tabs and close. So it has a nice place for the fabric to go. And that's how you switch them out. Okay. So number six. Oh, you know, my needles are in the wrong position. I added another needle, but I didn't look at my reference chart. So they actually need to go in the back. So, pays to look before you do. So I'm going to move those two needles. Um, I've got my threads already done. So because I'm going to be moving the needles, all I will have to do is just re-thread the needles. It's saying to use the spreader. So here is the spreader. I'm just going to flip that down and now the point is going into the hole so that means you are using the spreader. If you take it out you are not using the spreader. So here it says spreader use. So that is done. So I think I'm ready once I move my needles so I'll do that and then we'll start sewing. back in business. So I'm just making sure that they have stayed tight throughout the threading. I put it behind this bar here and then I'm ready to thread the needles. Okay, we're going to give it a try now. So you can lift the foot back here. like I don't have my bottom looper. Maybe while I was changing the needles it came out. So yes, it did come out when I was changing the needles. It didn't come out far, it just came out of the, the actual looper. So maybe it's good, you get to see a little bit of troubleshooting. Okay, let's try it now. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment, and I hope to see you next time. Make sure to subscribe if you have one of these, and if you think that this is helpful for you.